Superstars in Supernatural BC, the Four Continents Figure Skating Championships brings together a common purpose. Get ready for the big show just about one year out. In the Pacific West, the Olympic season is about to dawn. Figure skating's finest from four continents find a focus on the ice of one rink. Today, ambitions are set to soar. One of winter's most exacting sports calls for four disciplines. Cutting edge control. The look of a landmark performance. The right rhythm. The near perfect partnership. Today, Vancouver's Pacific Coliseum plays host to a season on the brink. The premier skaters from Asia, star-spangled athletes from America, and the contenders from the home country of Canada, as four continents converge on the Olympic City on CBC. Pacific Coliseum is the place, a venerable venue which is making itself ready for the Olympic Games. This is a test for everyone, the building, the volunteers, and most of all, the athletes, the skaters at the ISU Four Continents Figure Skating Championships. The aspiring Canadians, World Championship bronze medalists, and national champions Jessica Dubé and Bryce Davison are on the ice, warming up for a big moment on home ice. And now we sweep into our spot over the backboards at Pacific Coliseum, once the home of the Vancouver Canucks, now the home of big time figure skating on CBC. Hi everybody, Scott Russell along with Tracy Wilson and Kurt Browning. This is a date that everybody circled on their calendar as don't miss this season, the Four Continents. What a terrific opportunity for these skaters to come and test out the Olympic ice and the Olympic venue. They'll be taking it all in. They'll be going around backstage looking for the nice quiet place to warm up. They'll get a lay of the land and they're gonna pray that they're gonna have beautiful weather like we've been having. But it's interesting as the games become closer, the skaters will be visualizing what it feels like to skate on Olympic ice and this will give them a very clear picture. And Kurt, very fine figure skating nations the Asians are here, the United States is here, and the Canadians who were strong at the last World Championships are here. Yeah, not only the advantage of um, getting to feel what this atmosphere is going to be like and, and like you spoke about, but getting to compete against the best in the world and at this event, that is exactly what is here. So if you did great in your Grand Prix, fantastic, but everybody who is somebody is here and what an advantage for uh, these, these athletes. Uh, the intangible, Tracy, and I want you to both comment on it. Home ice for the Canadians, getting the feel a year out, All the right. crowd will be behind the Canadians. The crowd will be behind them, and that's how the Canadians have to view it, because it can also be seen as pressure. And let's face it, over the next few months, it's going to be all about medals and winning and bringing home the gold and making Canada proud. So they're going to get a little bit of a taste of it here, and they're going to be testing themselves against, as Kurt said, the best in the world. So this is really a great test for the Canadians. Kurt, do you buy that home ice is big? It's huge, and you said it could also be pressure. It could only, it could also be only pressure. Um, but I think that it's momentum time. These guys, it's only, it's a year away from the Olympics. But I think what happens on this ice here is going to be in the back of their mind at the Olympic Games. Important to build that momentum now. Set right. the tone. Yeah, set the tone. Set the table. Let's get rolling. We're <laughs> going to begin with the pairs short program. You'll see three Canadian pairs: Jessica Dubé, Bryce Davison, Megan Duhamel, and Craig Bunton, and another pair which has had a breakthrough season. With more. Here's Brenda Irving. Scott, me, Lynn Brodeur and John Matadal are the reigning Canadian bronze medalists. And, you know, if you would have told them last summer that they'd be here at the Four Continents competition, they may have thought you were joking. And that's because they were having some very serious concerns about the direction their career was heading. Last summer was just sort of get back to enjoying skating again and see how far we could push this year. I mean, we knew that we needed to be almost top four to continue skating the, the year after into Olympic year. So we really didn't think too much about the events after nationals, was just getting there and making that kind of a highlight. Well, guess what? They are here and will probably be heading to the World Championships in Los Angeles in March. But 
Skate Canada doesn't want to make that announcement quite yet. They're watching the Annabelle Langlois and Cody Hay, last year's Canadian champions. She has an injury, but they haven't competed all season long. So their readiness for a major competition of the magnitude of the World Championships got really in doubt. And Brenda, a dozen hours of skating from four continents on the main CBC television network now through Sunday prime time and the gala. Of course, you can see everything on digital bold and live streamed on cbcsports.ca, courtesy of the commentary of PJ Kwong. Well, a big chance for Milan Brodeur and John Matadal of Canada. There is a good chance that Canada will have three spots in the Paris competition at the Olympic Games in this very building in 2010. So it's time for Milan from Saint-Jean-sur-Richelieu and John from Tatamagush, Nova Scotia, to make impressions when it counts. Third at the National Championships and skating to Chambermaid Swing. Required elements in the short program. The skaters have to execute side by side jumps. Opening here with triple toes. Bang on, great start. All year we've watched them do a double twist, planning here a triple twist to increase the difficulty. They did it. All the top teams doing triple twists. down on the throw triple loop. John train in Saint Leonard, Quebec with Richard Gauthier, Bruno Marcotte, and Manon Perron. Spiral sequence, that too required by all of the pairs. I like their speed and their attack in the program. John Matatal of Canada that believe they're on the verge of something big this season. Oh, no, no, no. But, to the boards and words from Richard Gauthier and Manon Perron for John Matatal and Milan Brodeur. Good job. Well, they came out on the ice and really got this competition started with great speed, great music, and perfect triple toes. One, two, three revolutions. Milan not as high in the air, but a nice clean landing. Great start. Here's a look at their triple twist, new for them this year. You see how she came down on his shoulder, so they'll lose the quality marks for that, but they're going to gain for the degree of difficulty, picking up a couple of extra points there. Now right into their throw, 
and she gets good height, but she's tipped a little bit in the air, and so she has to put her right hand down to save the landing. You can see John, I think he's whispering sweet nothings in her ear, but <laughs> that's very, very common among pairs and dance teams. The skaters talk to each other, making sure they're cueing each other and really working together in sync as a team. You look pretty, you look pretty hot there. The scores will be Scorpion Brother and John Matatal of Canada. At both Skate Canada and the National Championships in Saskatoon, they were wonderful in the free skater, the long program. They're looking to get a good start in the short program. Her here, Milan Brodeur and John Matadal, 55.16 in their short program here in Vancouver. And as Jessica Dubé and Bryce Davison of Canada take to the ice, we remind you, we'll have more of our full coverage from Pacific Coliseum and the Four Continents Championships tonight. Meantime, for Dubé Davison, it's confirmation time. They have regained the national championship. Skating to Cold Plays Fix You, choreographed by David Wilson. Starting with a beautiful set of triple southpaw jumps, this team has the ability to not only technically gain and rack up points, but they also can set a spell on the audience. Triple twist. such a wonderful high winning that bronze medal at the World Championships in Sweden last season. And then they failed to make the Grand Prix final in Korea. Well, they've already proven that they can fight back. They lost their national title, fought back from that. They didn't get to go to the Grand Prix Final, and let's see if they can fight back from that. But with that new triple twist in their repertoire that they didn't have last year, they might have the arsenal that they need. Kurt, you mentioned that they are able to cast a spell with their artistry and their performance. The other pair team that used to be able to do that too was Sally and Pelche. When they're on, these two reminiscent of that great pairs team. David Pelche at the side with their coach, Annie Barabe, helping them along. And that is the best I have seen them skate this year by far in the short program. What? A terrific performance. And they'll have the crowd on their feet. The Canadian champions, Jessica Dubé and Bryce Davison. Well, their longtime coach and supporter, Annie Barabe, along with Jessica Dubé, also in their corner, as Tracy mentioned, David Peltier. The last two competitions, Jessica has missed this first element, but look at how beautifully that was performed today. Lots of speed going in and out of the elements, and this, Kurt, the triple twist. And I've always been watching carefully to see if she touches his shoulder, and that would be great 
for the Worlds and the Olympics to see her not have to come down on a shoulder. And that, though, was the best triple twist I've seen them do. Oh, I'm getting picky. Yeah, you are, yeah. as you <laughs> should be, and that's how they separate the men's from the boys in this. But in terms of their progress, they needed to add that triple twist, as you said, to really be able to compete and take away the technical advantage of the top teams. Especially the Chinese teams. And that triple twist is getting so close. They just need a little bit more height. Well, I think it's not a problem anymore. You know, it, it was it was a deficiency that was in their repertoire and the um, you know, the side-by-side -side triples are <laughs> exquisite. <laughs> They're kind of handsome kids, too. <laughs> She's from Drummondville, Quebec. His family's from Huntsville, Ontario, up in the Muskokas. I wonder if David thinks this is easier than competing. <laughs> he doesn't look like it. No, it doesn't. Their highest score internationally this season in the short program, 60 points, well ahead of that well done. here. 64-36 in the short program for Dubé Davison, the Canadian champions. The next competitors representing China, Dan Zhang and Hao Zhang. World class in every way and getting ready to test the depth of their Olympic talent again. Dan Zhang and Hao Zhang of China. They won the silver medal at the Olympic Games in Torino after a bad crash by her, but they had the guts to keep going and it paid off. Finished second at the Grand Prix final, just behind their teammates, Pang and Tong. Beautiful piece of music on Wings of Song, choreographed by Marina Zueva. Effortless. Second at the World Championships in Sweden in 08 to Eliona Savchenko and Robin Solkovi of Germany. Well, you saw their strengths at the beginning of the performance with the twist and the throw, and this is an area of the artistry, the lifts that they've had to work on not the quality that Dubé and Davison have, so it's a real trade-off. But Kurt, I like what Marina Zueva has done with this in her choice, with this piece of music. It's a very, very easy piece to express and feel. They hail from the north, both of them in Harbin, but they now train in the Olympic city of Beijing, Zhang and Zhang and of China. From China Dan and Welcome back, Zhang and Zhang of China, along with their coach, Yao Bin. And they started very strong. Well, yeah, that was a textbook and 
how to do it kids kind of a moment with the catch and the twist, the speed, everything. And Look at the, the height. Flow. Gosh. His arms are straight up in the air as he catches her. Gorgeous. And then. Difficult entry. Very difficult okay. entry. And then the flow. And you can't see how far across the ice she's going, but this is unbelievable. It's like she just stepped off the curb. Nothing so but smooth. net. <laughs> Not, yeah, well, <laughs> nothing but net. And then focus here. It's just focus. You get in, upper body goes too fast, and the foot's not ready. You're not down in your knees. She just didn't have the commitment to that triple jump. That happens in practice sometimes, but you always say to yourself, that'll never happen in competition, but this time it did. I was intrigued from the opening, the position that she took, the, uh, the challenge of the classical music, and right away, the first few seconds, they started moving so quickly like they were busy and late for something, and, and they kind of lost me there. The, the, I can see what Marina was doing with the choreography. The this team might need to just relax into it a little bit more before I become a believer. Not too many smiles in the Mr. Chinese Mr. corner Four here in Vancouver. 63.20. The results Dan after the short program. When you put it all together, 63.2 will leave Zhang and Zhang of China second. The next competitors representing China, Ching Peng and Jian Tong. Peng and Tong of China, the Grand Prix final champions. They won that in Korea. And now they skate on CBC television, the home of championship figure skating right through the worlds in Los Angeles in March. Just to make the in the intensity of the moment even more, they had what what I would say was a terrible warm up, missed their throw, missed their side by side jumps, and Jang was forced into the boards. Can they recover? Side by side, triple toes. No, she opened up on hers. Watch this next element, the height. Out of a spread eagle, best in the world. Wow. She had waited too long to land that. I really thought she was going to have to step out. I was wrong. That was beautiful. Together they won the world championship in 06, the year they were fourth, just off the podium at the Olympics. Nice lines here on their spiral sequence, and this is a team who, like Zhang and Zhang, were known for their high flying tricks and has their artistry ever come a long way, especially this season. You start to get a sense of their personality, not just their athletic ability. You talk about ability, they have a lot of natural ability. Earlier in their career, they basically watched tapes and coached themselves. Lost the flow on that one. Very bluesy music, not, not a real bluesy program, and not a very bluesy color. No strangers to the top of the podium at four continents. 
three times they've been the champions of this event. Ladies and gentlemen from China, Ching Pong and Chang and Tong of China. Welcome back, Chiang Pang and Jian Tong of China. Yao Bin, their coach. Well, here's a look at their triple jumps at the beginning of the program. His was really nice. Oh, he actually slipped a bit on the takeoff, but easily rotated. Slipped, you could actually hear his blades hit. <laughs> I don't know how he did that, but she was leaning way far back before she jumped. Really wasn't down in her knees at all. This went. Great, huge height, so exciting. And they both have such length of their bodies. When they do moves together, they really match and it looks great. I think this was the highest throw we saw today. And look at the trajectory and the speed. I love the way she gains speed in the air, takes it right out into the landing ice. Uh, one of the problems though, their spins, they got a little bit out of unison. And then as they were spinning, they started to drift apart and they got further and further away from each other. So that's definitely a quality mark. And then what happens is that you gave away what you earned on your loop and your twist. So it's, uh, it's a game of inches, centimeters, what do we call it? Millimeters? Millimeters? That close. Their high water mark this season was at the Grand Prix final in Goyang City in South Korea, where they were right on it, and they won the championship. As you said, Kurt, they'll pick up, what, a point and a half, maybe two points for the throw, and the, the same again for the twist, but they do lose four points uh, for the error on the triple jump, so one kind of erases the other. The short program score Leaders is right now are Jessica Dubé and Bryce Davison, the Canadian champions. For the Grand Prix final champions, 36-36 technical, 29-24 on the program. 65-60 will put them into first place beyond the Canadians. The final competitors representing Canada, Megan Duhamel and Craig Bunton. How appropriate the name of the place that Megan Duhamel is from, Lively, Ontario. <laughs> You're going to like her. She's a great athlete, along with her partner, the veteran campaigner, Craig Bunton. He's been three times the Canadian champion with Valerie Marcoux. Now with this new partner, he again is climbing the ladder. Double twist to open. They're going for the quality marks as opposed to the difficulty marks in that element. And now side by side triple toes.
risky element coming up here. It's a throw triple lutz. She nailed it in warm up. Just like that. They were an astounding six that their first world championships together, putting Canada in a very strong position in pairs competition heading to the home Olympics. That was the best I've seen of them yet. Richard Gauthier, Manon Perron, their coaches. I'm sure they'll agree with you, Kurt. Did not put a, appear to put a foot wrong in that performance. Ladies and gentlemen, train out of Saint-Léonard, Quebec, which is becoming a hotbed for this kind of thing. Megan DeHamel and Craig Bunton. You know, when I'm on the ice with Craig, I find myself just picking up the pace of my stroking a little bit. He's got a very smooth, uh, secure stroking style that I envy and, and look up to. I think Bryce Davison has a similar one, but there's something about the way Craig uh, gets from A to B on the ice that I envy. And then there's her. She's all guts and glory and fun. I've never felt that good in this game. That was good, eh? Yeah, sure it was. It was good. And you know what? He is also extremely resilient. He's had the rotator cuff problem, the shoulder problem. Uh, he's had a deeply cut hand at the Grand Prix of France. You talk about guts, she's got it. So does he. Here's their opening element. Difficult steps on the way into it. But it's a double twist, so they'll pick up marks for the quality, but not the difficulty. Perhaps about two points back minimum from the rest of the field because of that. And she makes up for it by doing it with her arms over her head, and here's the triples. She delayed that. It was gorgeous. Wow. And the speed coming out. Was there any doubt, Richard? <laughs> That's a big one. Here comes the throw Lutz. She stick her tongue out. Whatever however, whatever works, do it. And she was smiling before she hit the ice. But there's just days when you're competing, the lights are on, the television cameras are there, and Tracy and Kurt and Scott are blabbing away, and everything feels perfect. And that obviously was one of them. Big smiles all the way around in that corner. Oh, really? So close with Pang and Tong and Dubay and Davison. Just over a point separates them. Going over the scores, Dubay and Davison lost a point for a music violation. The short program score is. Neither Chinese team putting out their best effort. This could get interesting. And they're happy with what's happened here. 35 12 technical, 26 96, 62 0 8 puts DeHamel and Bunton in contention in fourth after the short program is said and done. That was a good short program event. Very exciting. There will now be a short intermission while the ice is resurfaced. Here's how it looks after the short program. Pang and Tong of China have the lead, but not by much over Jessica Dubé and Bryce Davison of Canada. Zhang and Zhang of China, third, just ahead of Duhamel and Bunton, again of Canada. Very close, very exciting after this short program. Now here's Brenda. Well, Scott, Tracy, and, and Kurt were saying that this was by far the best performance they've seen of your short program this season. What did the two of you think? Uh, we agree with that. Uh, it was a really good program, and we're really pleased with it. And obviously, there's always more room to improve, and we're just going to keep working on our speed and every element to make them better, but we're really happy. Well, one of the goals this season was to incorporate the triple twist into the competition. Uh, it's a work in progress, but where do you see it right now in its evolution? For sure, it's come a long way since the beginning of the season. Um, since Skate Canada, it, it, the catch has gotten much, much better. We still need to work on the split a little bit and then maybe add some steps uh, before the twist for next year, but um, it's uh, right on the track we want it to be on. Well, best of luck in the free skate. Thank, Thank you. you. Jessica DeBay, Bryce Davison, uh, two-time Canadian champion, Scott.
China leads the way after the pair is short. Two of the top three, including Olympic silver medalist Zhang and Zhang. But Jessica Dubé and Bryce Davison of Canada have a season's best to stand second. Close to the front runners, 06 world champions, Hang and Tong of Chips. Well, the ice dance competition got underway with a compulsory dance. And this time around for this competition, the skaters had to learn a brand new dance. And it's called the Fin Step. Now, that's not a major problem for most of the teams that have been competing all season long. Long, but it certainly was a challenge for Canada's Tessa Virtue and Scott Moyer. Uh, Tessa had surgery on her legs earlier in the season. This is their first international competition. And so I spoke with them about it yesterday, and they said it was just one more thing to add to an already full plate. This is the first of three programs. Each of the teams will perform. It is the lowest scoring of the three, but not even the reigning world silver medalist can ignore it because it really kind of sets the table for the rest of this competition. Right now, let's go upstairs to Scott Russell and Tracy Wilson. Watch out for Merrill Davis and Charlie White, 22 and 21 respectively, both from the Detroit area, and they train with Virtue and Moyer in Canton, Michigan. They are fresh off a win at the U.S. National Championships. Belbin and Augusto, last year's National Championships, were out due to injury. These two stepped up with a fine performance. You know, they've been skating so well all year. Third at the Grand Prix Final, very consistent, well-matched team. And a real spark in winning Skate Canada early in the season in Ottawa. Well, for those of you who follow the ice dance, if you're thinking, I've never seen this before, well, first time I've seen this as well. It was performed in competition for the first time at the U European Championship just a couple of weeks ago. And this dance is a tribute to the great Finnish dance team, Susanna Rocamo and Petri Coco. They did this for their uh, quick step, their original dance, when they won the European title back in 1995. So it's been turned into a compulsory dance and all the skaters are performing it. And it looks like a heck of a lot of fun to do. You can see the speed that they're carrying across the ice into the skid there. And then some toe steps. And the real trick to this dance is using the skating knee, getting a lot of bounce, and then that translates into a lot of speed across the ice. And yes, Tracy, Belvin and Augusto are out for the United States, but these two won their championship the old-fashioned way. They earned it. Merrill Davis and Charlie White took that title in Cleveland, Ohio, and they were strong in the compulsory dance here in Vancouver, 35-23. They had the lead at that point in time. And from the States However, Tessa Virtue and Scott Moyer took to the ice, and for them it has been a season of recovery, of readjusting, and they hope a return to form that made them World Championship silver medalists in Sweden in 2008. having enough time to train, enough ice time and enough physical strength. Often skate for six hours a day, spending a couple hours on the free dance, the original dance, and then the compulsory. Little bit of a bobble there, uncharacteristic for Virtua Moyer, but they got right back into the dance. It shouldn't be too costly. But when they're trying to manage training all portions of the competition, then to have to learn a brand new dance, it's a uh, a big challenge. They looked great last month in Saskatoon at the National Championships in reclaiming their title. She had leg surgery in the offseason. It was an overuse injury, exertional syndrome, but Tessa Virtue looks like she's rounding into full form along with her partner, Scott Moyer. They've been together 12 years. Well, they're flying through this 
lots of speed, wonderful line. Look at their free legs, the leg that's in the air. They have a nice extension at unison, perfectly matched. Nice lilting section through here. And their bouncy knees allows their shoulders and upper body to remain smooth. All the work done from the waist down. The rest is supposed to relax and show off the light, snappy character of the dance. And Brenda said the compulsory dance sets the table, and so it does for Tessa Virtue and Scott Moyer. 36.4, they take the lead. Right now, here's Brenda. Tessa Virtue and Scott Moyer. Scott, here is a look at the standings after the compulsory dance. Virtue and Moyer in first, Davis and White in second. Crona Poirier of Canada in third place, and Weaver Poge also of Canada in fifth place. Well, Tessa Virtue and Scott Moyer join me now, and I know you guys would have loved a few more run-throughs of that program, but the judges have you in first place. What did you think of the performance? Well, we were pretty happy with today's performance. Uh, we always like to use the compulsory dances to kind of get us ready for OD and free dance, which are our favorite uh, portions. So. I think that uh, kind of got us started and we're really excited for the weekend. Well, your training ro routine has been uh, relentless and Tess, I was wondering how are your legs holding up with all of this training and, and now this competing? Uh, well, I think now that we're back competing again um, with nationals, they sort of took a beating. Uh, it's a pretty stressful week and again here we're so excited and that's what's really getting me through is I'm just so happy to be back on the international scene. Um, they're a bit sore and the dance today was kind of shaky, but uh, I'm feeling stronger every day So I just know that uh, the next couple days of competition will be okay. Well, good luck with the original dance Thank, Thank you. you. Well, we'll have more skating coming up for Vancouver when we return to the four continents competition The women will take to the ice their short program is next